Hello everyone, today I decided to release a Halloween book review special. I hope you enjoy it. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Thank you. For today's book review, I decided to take a different approach. Instead of going for your regular scary story, I decided to dive into some witchcraft. Now I'm not going to convert into being a witch anytime soon. I just wanted to discover what being a witch is all about. If anything, I wanted to change my perspective on them, and this book did just that. So the book I am reviewing today is The Complete Grimoire, Magical Practices and Spells for Awakening Your Inner Witch by Lydia Pradas, published in 2020. Lydia is the Wiccan witch behind the Instagram sensation Wiccan Tips, and the author of The Complete Grimoire. She comes from a family of witches and teaches and writes about witchcraft and paganism to beginner witches. Lydia is a reassuring and trusted guide on your witchcraft journey, addressing key questions and debunking common misconceptions. She starts by giving us a history lesson about witches. She said witches are misrepresented and are far from reality. We are all connected through invisible and multidimensional links. She mentions that anyone can be a witch. We do not have to be in a particular family to join the club. Witchcraft is a choice. It is a tool that can be used to guide our morals and ethics. Additionally, she mentions that we could be in a group of witches called a coven, or we could do it alone, which is called a solitary. However, we don't have to be alone even if we are a solitary witch. We could still be in groups. She also mentions that witchcraft does not tie us to any deity, ritual, or ethic. It is compatible with all religions. She says that anyone can be a witch, male or female. They are both called witches because it's a gender neutral term. However, the word witch did give women a bad name because it was used to label them and prevent them from being able to do certain professions like medicine. She tells us that there are several types of witches. These types of witches are cosmic, eclectic, green, hereditary, kitchen, secular, solitary, and wiccan. If I were to practice witchcraft myself, I think I would probably choose to be a solitary witch. Solitary witches practice alone by their own choice, and their crafts are usually personal, so I believe it fits me best. Next, she explains many concepts and terminologies that witches follow. One thing that I learned was that witches have strong connections with the earth. A lot of the things they represent are for the earth. She mentions that we owe our planet since we use its energy to maintain our lives. She mentions that our bodies consume inner energy as well as create it. We need to maintain a steady flow of internal energy to stay healthy. Eventually, once we pass on to the next life, our energy returns to the earth. She states that witchcraft is strongly connected to the natural processes in our bodies, planets, and universe. She suggests that if we want to practice witchcraft, we must learn the science behind nature, the five elements, the moon cycles, and many more. She briefly explains our chakras, breathing, meditating, grounding, and visualizations. The one that was new to me, however, was grounding, which is a form of meditation that allows living in the present. It is supposed to keep us calm and reconnect us with the earth. She mentions that witches are not out to hurt anyone. It is not their nature to do so. Witches follow the threefold law, meaning the energy we put into the universe will return to us times three. She says the first three steps to becoming a witch are reading, writing, and practicing. To write, she says that witches use a book of shadows for journaling and a grimoire for information on how to perform witchcraft. This makes sense because this book provides us with the information we need to know. Next, she tells us all the tools witches use for their rituals and witchcraft. She mentions using the tools necessary for you. All of them are not required for you to begin witchcraft. I found it interesting how much effort is needed to ensure that you can cast your spells properly and remove negative energies. She states that you must cleanse first, then consecrate, and charge and imbue your tools to avoid mixing or stirring up unwanted energies. She also mentions that witches celebrate holidays as well, through the will of the year, which is divided between four of each greater and lesser Sabbaths. Greater Sabbaths occur on high energy dates and harvesting stages, planting or sprouting for example. Lesser Sabbaths celebrate the change of the years. To make things brief, you have an actual Sabbath, like holidays, then they fall into categories of Sabbath types, which is the greater or lesser. She explains that each Sabbath event that occurs throughout the year and leaves us a recipe made during those times. 
The most interesting part for me was when she spoke about crystals. I actually got an insight into the different crystals and their uses. Previously, I did not understand what they all meant when I went to the shops that had them. Now I have a new founding respect for them and those who use them for their witchcraft. Ones that stood out to me the most are amethyst, black tourmaline, citrine, clear quartz, and tiger's eye. Of those six, the tiger eye is probably the one I could see myself purchasing in the future. She states that it promotes focus, patience, and courage. This helps you make better decisions and soothe tensions after an argument. She also talks about the different shapes crystals can take and how that impacts the energy around us. I did not know that these crystals require cleansing, charging, and programming to continue to work. So that is something I should keep in mind before purchasing one. Next she discusses the many herbs used in witchcraft. She explains that Mother Earth offers these herbs to heal our minds and spirits. If you had a herbal bath or tea before, you would be familiar with many of the herbs she mentions in this grimoire. She explains how to use the herbs properly for witchcraft, even giving us a recipe for a recovery potion. Another thing I took interest in was the eighth clair senses, which consists of sight, knowing, hearing, feeling, touching, smelling, tasting, and emotion. Out of all the eight, I believe I am clear audience, which is clear hearing. Clear audience is people who perceive sounds, words, or noises, as she states. She also lists traits to help you quickly identify which one you are. If you decide to purchase this book to read, let me know which clear sense you represent as. In addition to the eight clair senses, she also explains how to use tarot cards for fortune telling, pendulums for divination and energy detection, runes for divination and writing methods, scrying for visions, and palm reading to define your personality and predict your future. She mentions that witches can connect with the spirit realm. This is when our altars will come in handy because we can communicate with the spirit realm and speak with our ancestors, paying our respects and giving offerings to keep their memories alive. Since witchcraft does not involve a particular religion, it is up to you on how you want to pursue this portion of witchcraft. Lastly, she speaks on spells that are only used for your intentions. We must remember that everything alive has vital energy that needs to be cleansed regularly. This includes the environment we live in. She also wants us to remember that spells do not always work. It takes practice to get them right. In the end, this is an informative grimoire about how to unlock your inner witch and what it takes to stick to their traditions and methods. My perspective has changed on witches, and I don't believe they're scary anymore. They are more like monks who want to clear their negative energies and be one with nature. However, I do understand how it got to the point of being associated with Halloween, simply because of the history of the word witch and how it was used. Even though I will not be using witchcraft myself, I am glad I kept an open mind to read this book. It was very insightful and I enjoyed the history lesson and the different explanations. If you are thinking about becoming a witch for Halloween or just life in general, I encourage you to give this book a read. If you do, let me know in the comments what did you get out of it and what are some things you are going to be practicing or currently practicing. Thank you for tuning in to this Grimoire review. I hope to see you in the next following book review. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Until next time. Have a happy Halloween.